911. Where's your emergency? Um, I think this girl just fell down the stairs. She's at the bottom of the stairs, head busted up with blood everywhere. An apparent home invasion, an intruder on the loose. It was this surveillance video. Did you immediately perk up when you heard that? Absolutely. You get rid of the clothing because the murderer might have left something on it. Absolutely. And he got real quiet and whispered, and he said, red blood. And I remember... Mommy was wearing blood. Wow. Chills up and down my spine. I hate that, that I'm saying this, but I was like, why is it her? And why couldn't it be somebody else? The stories we're telling are about the absolute worst moments of someone's life. We know there's probably more photos of crime scene. Hi, I'm Michael Nardi. I'm a producer with Dateline NBC. Welcome to NBCU Academy. And this is Dateline. Normally, Datelines are two-hour shows. The first thing's a story, even a germ of a story, meaning this crime happened, they assign it to a producer, and usually the producer is assigned or asks for an associate producer to help. I was assigned one of my first stories with Mike. We work really well together. Do you think we'll be able to get photos from them or? Definitely. Okay. I organize all of the media, so if we get any photos or video, I have to organize all of it. Sometimes I talk to the characters, do um, pre-interviews, or I have to also go out in the field and kind of be a liaison between the crew and our characters and just make sure everything runs smoothly. It was the dead of night, and she ran as fast as she could. When you first get a story, you need to learn and understand as much as possible about this story. And so that means what happened, who are the people involved, who are people that you might talk to. The audience members, if they can see themselves in the character, or if they're, the character is compelling and they want to hear what they want to say, they want to understand what they're going through, then they're going to stick through it with us that whole way. I've got to convince a jury that this normal, suburban, professional guy with no record killed his wife. We have 12 acts and we have commercial breaks. So you have to find ways at the end of each act to set up the next act. So the viewer is gonna wanna come back. Coming up, at Connie's wake, a curious encounter triggers questions about someone in the family. I don't know how clear it's gonna but be without when, when they go back to clarify it. Allison is my sounding board as my senior producer. And she's sort of my guy to help shepherd me and our story through the process of getting to air. I'll write the first draft of the script, and then Allison will look at it, and she'll give me notes. Maybe the solution is that. Just trim it. Yeah. Families gathered at the local street fair, leaving their hectic work weeks behind them. Not so for Summer Jackson. A long nightmare was about to begin. These people have lost in some cases, lost everything. And we're asking them to share that story with us and with our viewers. And we as the producers, we have to understand that and we have to navigate that. You have to be a human first. This was good. It seemed to be slow, slow getting started. Pretty early on in the process, we have what we call a radio cut screening for David and Liz, for the executive producers and the other senior producers. And it's the chance for them to really weigh in on what's working, these characters are good, what's missing, where's the mystery. Now my thought is that it does come in an act earlier. I've had screenings where you're almost back to the drawing board. You're moving things around, you're changing things, you have to go do another interview. It's a lot, it's a lot of pressure and sometimes it gets really overwhelming. I write everything down in a notepad and that's just what makes my anxiety go away. It seemed a little like we were missing the drama of them mm -hmm. uh, experiencing it. And then, usually about a week before air or so, you have what's called a second screen or the fine cut screen. It's basically, this is what we want to show the viewers. There'll be final notes and stuff like that. Then it's it's off to, to post-production to really get it ready for air. What a strange way to grow up, right? Where you really don't know the answer to one of the most important questions in your life. I get asked a lot by people about Keith and Josh and Andrea and Dennis uh, and, and Lester. What are they like? Our correspondents are all great people. They're nice, they work their butts off, they are super talented, um, and they're just really genuine people. What's it done to you? Oh goodness. Um, what hasn't it done? Just knowing that we're doing good by putting 
their loved one's story out there and getting their, you know, the message out on their story. You start with this idea and you do interviews and you write scripts and you edit. And at the end of the day, you've created something that exists. It's this tangible thing that you can look at and say like, I, I created this, I was part of this.